this video is being made in June uh, 2006 right now and probably in a three or four months we'll have several other uh, generations of that foam are built and tested as you can see there tractor tires are tra yeah the tractor tires un under the trailer under the fifth wheel there uh, we're getting fairly good 12 time it run between five and ten minutes uh, good pH concentrations and we didn't show there they didn't get the videos of the technical people there were there they were testing pH continually to see what kind of uh, dilution rate we were getting on the ap application this was a particular our strongest foamer put in there we used about three quarters of a cup to five gallons in order to get the dwell time that we needed so uh, the kill time was based on the dwell uh, the other thing that after we were finished they decided that probably the lower half of the vehicle would be the primary target so as you go into uh, caution areas with a clean tank they might not put as much effort as we did in this particular case a wash in the top but wash basically from the top down that will all have to be uh, decided in in uh, some of your meetings and conferences. Uh, I'm sorry we don't have any of those people here to help add to the audio. This particular foamer that we're using right now is the main foamer 5. It might be uh, built for different applications. I uh, understand there's a different need or this particular model may work really well at uh, at the dump site or the, uh, I, I suppose I shouldn't say dump site, I, the milk processing plant if you will. For the dairy farmers they may need a different application of foamer uh, due to the economic pricing, the availability, how, how versatile it is, etc. Um, as Robert pointed out, new adaptations are coming about daily. and. Uh, some of the different components will certainly bring about advantages and uh, make it much more simple and streamlined for someone to apply this foam to the vehicle. As always, it's best to and then rinse down so that it doesn't actually dry. In this case, we didn't have a problem. The foam stayed on the vehicle plenty long enough and actually you pick and choose when you get to rinse it so the dwell time was actually really good uh, the foam and everything that runs off of this vehicle hitting this mat this mat is really resilient it puts up with anything except trying to cut it with a knife of course if you're on a gravel parking lot you need to use what will to support that for that type of a base it's an under uh, garment for it so that the rocks don't puncture holes in it. This allows ease of recovering of your wastewater and or the decontamination which is going to be just as important as decontaminating the vehicle I'm sure. Uh, this unit here is really simple. Uh, it's not rocket science. It's going to make it uh, very easy for anyone to and basically you're going to have the only thing that would restrict doing a good job is whether you have this chemical or not necessary to kill that bacteria. Notice the the tank has already been washed at this time, but there's no water or wash water, particularly on a pad. It just as it drains down to the bottom left hand corner in the picture is picked up by a sump pump and pumped to a 300 gallon holding tank. That's about 150 gallons of water to uh, complete this entire op operation of that we picked up about 125 gallons of wastewater 25 gallons was lost to evaporation and I know from experience on some hot summer days particularly like here in Texas where you're above 100 degrees you can have a 50 percent loss due to evaporation there's where we're, we're going in the reason why I'm pointing out that there's no water on the pad when we initially consulted with this with Buddy and uh, 
we talked about how much water was going to be collecting on this pad. You know, everybody thinks it's going to be a swimming pool, but it's not a swimming pool. You're going to collect this water, and if the pad has a bunch of little ripples in it, all those are like little dikes. So you want, and each one little dike is like a place to where the any dirt or grit will fall out. So you're not really going to be collecting much water on the pad itself. That's not the purpose of the pad. It's just a containment device so that it doesn't soak down into the road surface or the surface that you're washing on and you can pick it up. And we found in order to neutralize that water before we discharge it to uh, sanitary sewers first and storm sewers second would be to neutralize it in those uh, 150 gallons at a time in those totes which we show that later in where we did that. We tested several methods for that, and the only e economical way, or the best way, was to pick that water up and put it into a holding tank. It was to be too difficult to get a good neutralization on the uh, tarp itself, so we had to pick that up. Also, make note of, uh, as Robert said, the year that this is being applied, uh, the temperature during that time of year is going to certainly play a, a, a very big role in using these acids. Uh, in the winter time, obviously, we're going to need higher concentrations um, so that we can still maintain uh, a, a good cause and effect here. Um, the ambient temperature as well as the temperature of that vehicle in the summertime will have an effect on the application. And, uh, and how it's going to affect the foam, etc. By the way, I may also mention that the foam that we used had a red dye in it, and we do have that in the clear so that that red dye will not affect the uh, coloration of testing of pH levels, etc., uh, on a tester. Uh, so, actually, that is uh, available in a clear so that it should not affect any testing. Uh, properties whatsoever. The uh, R1420, which is the super surfactant used for the foamer, uh, is readily available and should not have any uh, other effect other than foaming for that particular application. That makes it strictly chemical act, uh, uh, insert for you to use to decontaminate. I want to point out at this time that it took 19 minutes to power wash this uh, particular tank we're looking at now in 14 minutes for the foaming and sanitizer ap application. So you're talking about roughly 30 minutes. Remember this is a test so once your staff gets familiar with it they can probably cut these times down by half. They'd be able to go a lot quicker than what we did it here because we were trying to test to see how well it was going, uh, whether we needed hot or cold water uh, or you know, and then what type type of pressure? Probably the ideal would be 45 gallons a minute, around 1,800 psi. 1,500 to 2,000 pounds would be pretty efficient. A smaller unit that you can get, like from Home Depot, uh, two or three thousand psi units would also work, but they'll be a little slower. Uh, remember that the milk scum is water soluble. There's a uh, bottom right hand. On the pad, you got a uh, strainer, the sump pump set down into that, and in front of that is an oil absorbent boom, so any hydrocarbons that are coming off the tanker are going to be picked up in that boom. Those booms can be reused again and again and again. The oil can be squeezed out of them. There's the tote that the uh, sump pump pumped it up to. Now that's actually being discharged down into the storm drain after it had been neutralized. The chemical people, or the yeah, the chemists and stuff that were there on site, had brought uh, some ingredients to neutralize that sanitizer with, which they did before it was dumped to storm drain. We also had storm drain people there uh, checking it out. 